Okay. I'm Michael Walker, uh, senior and left hand pitcher. Uh, Jeremy Wolf, senior, uh, left fielder. Tim Scannell, head baseball coach, Trinity University. Um, you know, it, it's amazing. Uh, this guy right here, to look Mike in the eyes, um, tells you everything about him. He is the most confident, competitive kid. Um, he's got a great breaking ball, awesome changeup, and then his fastball's got tremendous movement. We always kind of kid and say he's like spitting watermelon seeds. The ball's just never going to show the same shape from pitch to pitch. But really what's inside him is why we love having him and, and why he's pitched almost every big game we've ever had, and this was the biggest game of the tournament. Um, it's a great lesson for everybody that how far self-confidence can take you because uh, th that's all Mike is, is. He just truly believes in himself no matter what's going on. He never, ever backs down, and uh, he's just been a warrior, been tough as nails for, you know, four years for us. Um, in regards to the offense, you know, I, I felt us gaining momentum in the first inning was huge. Uh, Butler's seeing I single, um, that was big because it got the first run on the board. We were able to get a couple more across. Uh, but then Waters catching the first inning was huge. The kid hit an absolute bullet to center field, and he made kind of a blind jumping catch. And as it's been said many times in, in, in this room by many coaches, momentum's everything in this, you know, NCAA tournament. So we were able to squash momentum and then build off it and really ride Mike's back the rest of the way. Right. Okay, Coach, this was a, a critical game because it puts it in the driver's seat to move on to the College World Series. Uh, when a team delivers a overall dominating performance in all facets of the game, what do you tell them after to keep them fired up for tomorrow? Yeah, you know, I, I think um, with this group, it's not going to be necessarily what I tell them. This is where hopefully experience will prevail. That these guys know that last year uh, they were in this exact same boat. There's three teams left in the tournament. They're all outstanding teams. They all have the ability to take us uh, at any moment in time, you know, beat us. Uh, it's about us going home, getting rest, getting good meal, getting sleep, and then coming and kind of focus on the old baseball cliche of an inning at a time. But uh, hopefully our experience comes where we're not too high, we're steady, uh, there's tremendous confidence in this ball club, uh, one through nine in our lineup, and we still feel we have good pitching depth. Um, so, But we're going to have to earn it. Like no, Nobody here is going to uh, you know, step backwards because we're playing good. They're, they're going to be ready to go. They're going to ride some momentum as well, whoever wins the night game. Comment about the team's personality and that they're peaking at the right time. That they're, you know, the long season you have ups and downs, but right now you're playing the best. You know, I, I, th this team's personality is what makes it such a blast to coach. Again, I've been at Trinity for 20 years. Um, it's an unbelievable school. Uh, these are super smart kids with a focus in their life and a direction. Um, how hard they work in the field is amazing to me, but it's their looseness. This, this team has taught me, I think I've said it before a lot, uh, in terms of just, you know, understand let the game come to them. You know, I've, I'm more of an East Coast guy, I have probably a little edge to myself, and, and I've learned with this four-year group that these guys are uh, uh, very loose and very confident, and they understand that this game kind of ebbs and flows, and they roll with everything. Hey, Mike, uh, this is the biggest game of the year for you. How do you mentally prepare like the night before? Do you go over batters and do you watch tape or do you just walk out there and say, I'm going to just do the best I can? Yeah, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a big guy in like, you know, night before prepping, you know, watching hitters and stuff. I might take a quick look through their roster and see what guys are doing. Dave gives me a quick rundown of, you know, what, what their hitters like to do, what they like to swing at. I mean, I really just go out there the next day and treat it as, you know, I don't care who I'm playing. I'm going to pitch my game. It's the same as I have all year, you know, mix up pitches and just go throw the way I do. For a starter who's pitching in such a big game, you don't throw 95 mile an hour fastball. Um, are you going to put out an instructional video on how to strike batters out with an 80 mile an hour fastball? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's something that it's I've never thrown hard, so I've had to learn to you know mix location, mix pitches, and. I, I mean, I was a hitter all through high school and stuff, so I kind of used my mentality as a hitter to pitch, and uh, you know, I really just try to throw, you know, just fill up the zone, get ahead, and our defense is exceptional, so I just let them go to work. You're the definition when people talk about throwers versus pitchers. You're a pitcher. When you were growing up, did you watch Tom Glavin and Maddox and those guys that spotted the ball? Mm -hmm. I, I did. Um, I liked Glavin a lot and Maddox. Um, I mean, it's, it's just good to see guys 
be successful without blowing it past guys, especially now like baseball is so focused on throwing hard. Um, it's it's almost like a hidden talent. You don't see it a whole lot anymore. So I take pride in not blowing it past guys and getting my outs. Hey, Jeremy, you've uh, been a four-year starter at Trinity. You've been to four regionals. You've had incredible uh, individual success. How do you keep this from being old hat? Uh, I, I don't take it as an individual thing. I take it trying to help my teammates for every at bat, every inning in the field. I take it at one at bat, one pitch at a time. And so nothing really gets too too big picture for me. It's it's trying to keep it consistent from time to time. On a personal note, uh, when Trinity's playing at home and you're walking to the plate. Your walk-up song is the Beatles, Help Your Skelter. Yes, sir. Now, I did a little math. That song was recorded 24 years before you were born. Yes. How did that happen? Um, my mother uh, would put that song on. We had like a mixtape of Beatles songs, and that was number one on the mixtape. And so every time she would put that CD in, that was the first song to play. And so when we started having walk-up songs in high school, I think I, I picked that song, and I just wanted to keep it consistent, so I kept, I kept at it. And I love that song. Do you know what that song's about? Uh, I know what Marilyn Ma or uh, what Charles Manson turned it into, but I don't know what it's about now. Not a roller coaster. Is it really? Oh, okay. Well, there you go. All right. Uh, real quick, uh, Michael, uh, you were following up great performances by I think it was Ryan and Teddy. You guys talk amongst yourselves, top that kind of thing. Yeah, we do. Um, our team's very competitive internally, and I think it's one thing when you know a guy goes out and pitches a good game because the next guy is just like, all right, well, you guys got to do the same thing. So uh, I think it's it drives our competitiveness. And Skip talks about it a lot, you know, of pitching leading the game. So we've done a good job of letting our pitchers go out and control the way the game flows. So thanks, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.